climate change poses the greatest threat to humanity. The effects of climate change can set back decades of progress in the developing world. Just the scale of the issue is unsettling. Environmental shocks will become more extreme and more frequent. No single government or institution can solve this problem alone. We are the last generation that can alter the course of climate change and we require investment on a scale we have never seen before. At that time, to make a sustainable portfolio was to exclude companies, not to invest in green projects. And that strategy, we didn't believe in that strategy. We wanted to have inclusion of good companies and also investment in green projects. There were growing discussion about uh, climate change and, and global warming and things like that, but it was very difficult for us really to find something to invest in that had to do with that. At that time we had mostly Swedish government bonds and mortgage bonds, and we were looking for other alternatives also. The supply of, of interesting investment opportunities in, in, in the sustainable area was very limited. So we were looking for something more liquid, something easy to understand, something credible. Coming into 2006, 2007, we had a situation where, one, a lot of people were talking about global warming. We also had a situation where governments didn't need to borrow money. So the combination of investors being willing to contribute to a better society, together with the lack of government supply, basically made me sit down and draft uh, an idea about what could be done to engage uh, institutional investors in, at that time, global warming. I went out to a number of investors first, and those investors saw it was a great idea and with certainty that I had their support, I then went to the World Bank and said, this is something we have checked with clients, they're interested. What happened was a combination of us coming up with our environmental strategy, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change with very strong warning that we have to change the way we live and Mother Nature through catastrophic disasters telling us it is time to act. That mobilized the bank to provide to the investor community a product they can use to vote green. So we were approached by Scandinavian investors um, who came to us through their bank, SEB. They were looking for products in all asset classes that somehow addressed um, the challenges of climate change. And um, they had products in many of the other asset classes, but not for fixed income. SEB knew that the World Bank finances climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation projects, but we finance that through fixed income products. So um, for the Scandinavian investors, it was, it was perfect because they were looking for a product um, uh, that uh, supported these types of projects, but that uh, didn't have uh, project risk or specific country risk, and that had the same financial characteristics as other products they were familiar with. We uh, had a very constructive dialogue, and I think within a month, uh, the World Bank came back and said, and I think, especially because investors had agreed to that this was a great idea, agreed to go ahead and, and, and develop a product which enabled the investors not only to invest, but to invest inside their traditional, normal, mainstream benchmark portfolios. Which was, as I see it, the big change to everything that had been before, that they didn't have to have a special view with this kind of investment. The labeling and the process around this and the interaction with investors and the design, which was very, very simple, enabled and allowed institutional investors to engage in a way they had not engaged before. We had never launched a product with dedicated funding. So this was new for finance and at the same time we had this climate strategy. Um, so it was, a, it was like perfect timing.
the financial community and the scientific community tend to operate in two different spheres. And this was, uh, from my understanding, the first connection between these two worlds. And so we had to learn how to communicate with each other using two different languages, you know, financial vocabulary and uh, research-oriented vocabulary, and try to understand what the other party needed. Um, and uh, my colleague Knut Alfsen took the, took the chance to write that first second opinion, and it was the first time that we at Cicero had ever done anything like that. I think at that point we had no idea where it was going. So to be involved in the first Green Bond uh, was a bit of a surprise, of course, and we thought, well, maybe this is a, a one-off activity. So it's an interesting project. We're connecting with investors for the first time and with banks, and we're learning what they are interested in, and we're learning what we can communicate to them. But I think what we didn't know is how many times we would replicate this and grow and um, evolve our methodology as the market evolved. When the World Bank issued the first green bond, they set up a model for how green bonds should be done in, in terms of best practice. And that was a foundation for establishing the green bond principles. And several banks were involved in establishing these voluntary guidelines for the market uh, that later came to recommend independent reviews, um, as well as set up some uh, guidance on transparency. Climate risk is now a financial risk. Transparency uh, is important for investors in order for them to better understand uh, the climate risk exposure to their investments. And that's what the second opinion uh, gives them, more transparency on these risks. Impact reporting has been very, very important since the very beginning of the green bonds, but it's been an iterative process. The World Bank was very fortunate because they already collected and still collect a tremendous amount of data on all of their projects, and as projects are measured through their implementation, the performance against those performance indicators is updated. Now, through that learning process, I believe that the World Bank has definitely shaped impact reporting throughout the financial community. Um, and that impact reporting is a real value added, a form of accountability that issuers give to their investors and that investors can then give to their clients to show that this is where your money has gone, this is what it's doing, um, this is the progress we're making. To have this uh, positive investment in, in projects that really did something meaningful against climate change. And you had an independent second opinion on the climate criteria also, and uh, impact reporting afterwards. So really it could be quite safe that it was our money that we invested in this bond would do something meaningful in the battle against climate change. Before that, we, we all worked in silos and, and the environmental officers knew everything about the environment. The financial officers knew everything about finance, but the interaction which allowed the financial officers to give their input to how environments should be done. And the, the uh, environmental officers, they understood the financial characteristics probably is the big achievement of, of this in interaction with, with, this, with this product. What we see has happened in the market is that green bonds have catalyzed a change in investor behaviors. They want to know where their money is going, but not only for labeled bonds that they're buying. So not only for green bonds or for social bonds or sustainable bonds, but they're asking questions about everything they invest in. Um, and I think that's going to be the capital markets of the future. I believe that the types of lessons that have been learned from the green bonds in terms of transparency and accountability, knowing where your money is going, are lessons that are now being transferred to social bonds and now being transferred to wider thematic bonds. I truly hope that this expands, but I hope that in the world economy, in fact, grows beyond the question of thematic bonds and that, in fact, all uh, fixed income investments are measured in these ways. 
Well, my utopian future from a climate change research perspective is that all financial decisions are taking into account climate risk. Right now, green bonds are less than 1% of the total bond transactions, and we can see a lot of growth um, there in terms of different types of sectors, different issuer types, and different regions. So I hope in the next few years that the bond market continues to scale up and that we can continue to provide increased transparency and a connection between the climate science and financial decisions. Thank you.